How to sew the pincushion. This is one of the accessories in the craft storage set. It's available in two beautifully illustrated prints. Get organised in style and make this pincushion for your circular matching storage set. Making the pincushion. Let's start by assembling the pincushion. Take the pincushion gusset piece and the pincushion top and pincushion bottom. Now we're going to start by snipping the edges, the long edges of the pin cushion gusset. So if you make the snips just a little less than a quarter of an inch long because you don't want them to go into the seam allowance, this is what will help the pin cushion gusset to go around the top and the bottom and make it ease better. So once you've snipped along the top and the bottom edge of the pin cushion gusset, place it right sides facing with the pin cushion top. Start a little bit away, I'm starting about two inches to the left of one of the short sides and then place pins vertically through the pincushion gusset and the pincushion top. Because you've made the little snips, you'll find that it will open up nicely and ease round. When we made the craft basket, we didn't need to make these snips because it's quite a big circle, but for a smaller circle like this, the snips help the straight edge of the gusset to curve round the rounded edge of the pincushion top. So pin it together all the way round. Now you'll find that the pincushion gusset is longer than you actually need, but this is so that we can get a perfect fit. So what you need to do is just mark quarter of an inch inwards using an erasable pen from the start side that you started with and then place a pin on the pincushion top at exactly the same place where that quarter of an inch mark is. Now fold the other side, the end that you've finished with, on top and mark on the pincushion gusset the same place as where the pin is that you've placed in the pincushion top. This is where the two ends will meet up. Now that's where you're going to be sewing because that's where they meet up, but you obviously will need extra quarter of an inch seam allowance. So measure quarter of an inch just to the left of that and this is where you'll be cutting. So the first mark is the sewing line, this second mark is the cutting line. But before you cut, it's worth taking the time to just double check that it still fits. So if you pin the two ends of the gusset together at the marks you made, just make sure that the mark on one side matches up with the other one. And make sure, I'm showing you here, look, I've pinned it on this cutting line, so that's not correct. You need to move it so that you pin the two sewing lines together. So just make sure that you pin those two sewing lines together and then you can ease it round and just double check it fits exactly. This is the point at which you can adjust it if it doesn't. So it does fit, then I can just remove a few pins and cut along that cutting line. This is the best way to get a straight edge to match a curved edge exactly because you can get it the perfect fit by pinning it into place marking and measuring. Now you can join the ends of the gusset together. So pin them together at the top and the bottom. Use vertical pins for this because we need to leave a turning gap which we're going to measure. So just pin it together at the top and the bottom. Now if you fold that in half just to find the centre of that straight edge, you need to leave a one and a quarter of an inch gap in here. So if you measure either side of that and mark so that you've got a one and a quarter of an inch gap that's placed centrally, this is the gap that you're going to be using for filling the pincushion. It's much neater to fill it through the gusset rather than through one of the tops. So just mark the edges of that gap. Now sew together from the left hand side, stop at the gap and sew from the right hand and stop at the gap. Don't forget to reverse stitch on either end of the seam so it's nice and secure. So you can see that we've got the little turning gap left in the centre of that seam. You can now repin the edge of that gusset into place and you know it fits exactly. This technique you can use for lots of other things whenever you need to make sure that a circular edge matches a straight edge particularly if it's a smaller shape like this, it's always better to get the perfect fit to do all the pinning and then sew the ends of the straight piece together and then pin it back into place. So pin it all back into place.
and then sew it together all the way around using your quarter of an inch seam allowance. And now that's the top of the pincushion attached to the gusset. You can remove the labels at this point. Now you need to attach the pincushion bottom to the other side of the gusset. Now this is a lot easier this time because you know it's going to fit. If you want the prints to be exactly the same way up, then place them so that you can see they're the same way up. It doesn't really matter though if you don't want it doesn't if you don't mind, but if you want them to be the same way up then just double check before you pin into place. Now when you pin the other side of the pincushion gusset to the pincushion bottom, you know it will fit exactly because you've done all the measuring and the marking and the joining when you join the top. So pin it into place all the way round and then sew in exactly the same way as you did with the top. Once that's done, everything is nice neatly joined together. So you just need to turn it right sides out. So put your finger inside the gap and all the way through and take hold of the bottom edge and pull that through. Do this slowly and carefully. The gap is big enough to get everything through, but it's not a really big gap. So you'll just have to ease it gradually through. Until the whole of the pincushion is turned out. But just do it gradually and slowly and it will turn all the way through. Now it's all turned right sides out. It now needs a press because with all the turning through, it's a bit creased. Just press those, the turning gap and the seam of that short end. That just makes sure everything, all the edges are staying turned under. And now to get a nice finish, if you place the pincushion top on the top and then roll the seam between your fingers that joins it to the gusset, just do it bit by bit all the way round. This just gives you a nice crisp edge and makes the gusset lie nice and flat between the top and the bottom. So do that all the way around the top edge and then all the way around the bottom edge. And then that's finished. Filling the pincushion. You can either fill your pincushion with polyester fibre fill or ground walnut shells. I like using ground walnut shells as they keep the pin sharp and clean as they're mildly abrasive. You can buy these in pet shops or you can buy them in specialist sewing shops, but pet shops use them for reptile cages. Now, the easiest way to fill it up is take a piece, small piece of paper and roll it into a tube. If you then place the tube inside that turning gap, just ease it in gently and then open it out then it's like having a funnel to pour it in. And then you can just spoon the walnut shells in. Sand is another good thing to use, but I like the walnut shells because they're a little bit bigger, they're mildly abrasive and they have a really nice aroma. So fill it up in like this until the whole thing is full. If you're using polyester fibre fill, just fill it all the way to the top. Even if you're using um, walnut shells, put a little bit of fibre fill on top. It just keeps them safely inside, makes it easy when you're sewing it together. Now you just need to slip stitch this gap closed. So take a needle and thread and push the needle up through one side of the seam, leave a long length and then work a couple of stitches on top of each other. If you leave a length, then it's much easier to sew this securing stitch at the end and you can trim it later. Now slip stitch it closed by placing your needle through the fold of the fabric on one side and then up through the fold of the fabric on the other side, like a ladder stitch. So through the fold on the fabric on one side and up through the other. So you'll have small vertical stitches that will barely be able to be seen because they're between the two folds of the fabric. Now, because you want to make this extra secure and you don't want any, any of the filling to come out, work all the way along, it's only a short seam, and then go back and slip stitch through, but this time slip stitch between the slip stitches of the first go. And that just makes this extra secure, particularly if you've used um, walnut shells, you don't want anything to escape. So you can see I'm just slip stitching between the slip stitches of the first go. 
Keep your stitches nice and small and then you'll get a nice neat finish. And when you get back to the other end, work two or three stitches on top of each other to secure. And then rather than just cutting the thread off, push the needle through and out through the top of the pincushion. That means the length of thread is sitting inside. You can snip that end and snip off the starting end. And you've now filled your pincushion. Give it a nice pat and then it's ready to add the buttons. Adding buttons. We're going to sew buttons onto the pincushion as it just holds it inward slightly. Now measure and mark to find the centre of the pincushion top. So if you measure across one way and put a pin in, measure across the other way, then you can find the centre. And just place a small mark. Turn it over and repeat that to find the centre of the bottom and you place a mark. Now we're going to sew the buttons on to the pincushion bottom. So you need a long needle for this. I've actually used a doll needle so that it can go all the way through or a long darner will work. Use a long length of thread and thread the two ends through the needle and then you've got a loop on the other end. Now thread the thread through the mark on the top of the pincushion, thread it through the loop and you've got a nice neat starting point. Now just make a couple of stitches on top of each other so that's nice and secure. Now, a little tip here, to make sure the buttons stay in place while you're sewing, I put a little bit of fabric glue on the bottom of the button and then stick it into place. It just helps the button to stay in place while you're sewing, particularly with the first few stitches. The glue is will dry clear and is specially developed to use with fabric, so it won't leave any marks. Now, push it through the button and then out through the centre hole on the pincushion bottom and pull the needle all the way up through. Now take your other button and if you put a little dab of glue on the back before you stick it down into place push the needle up through one hole and down through another hole. And then you can put it through the mark, press the button to hold it and it just means that the buttons will stay in place while you're sewing. And then you just sew the buttons through by going through one hole across to the other hole and down through the button and down through to the next button. So you're always working one stitch that goes all the way through and then up through the button and down through. You don't have to add buttons, but it holds the filling more secure, creates a nice dip in the centre and is a more attractive look. You can leave it without the buttons, but this just makes it look more finished. And then continue working in this way until the buttons are really securely attached. Always going through one hole and out th through the other hole. Once you're happy that the buttons are securely attached, you can see it's made a nice little dip in the centre. You can work a couple of small stitches underneath one of the buttons to secure the thread. Then push the needle out all the way through to one of the part of the pincushion gusset just so that the end of the thread is lying within the pincushion and then trim it off and your lovely big pincushion is complete. <laughs>